recording. Sorry about that. There we go. We're now recording. Um, and there will be opportunities throughout the presentation for questions, um, but you're more than welcome to type the questions into the chat box and we'll get to them as we can. So let's get started. The Music Video Production Grant. It's a collaborative program that pairs emerging Saskatchewan talent from the screen-based and music sectors. Collaboration has so many benefits. When a group of people come together and contribute their expertise for the benefit of a shared project, both sides win. It allows you to see perspectives from other people. It helps you learn from each other. It encourages innovation. And what collaboration goes together better as music and film. Perhaps the best example of creative collaboration is from music and film, which explains the popularity and necessity of music videos. Let's talk about the importance of music videos. For musicians, it's a great marketing tool. There's a million ways to promote your music, radio airplay, a publicity campaign, print and digital advertising, influencers, social media campaigns, getting it synced to a movie or video game, the list really is endless, but one thing is for sure that marketing your music is just as important as creating it. The digital music landscape is more crowded than ever. Digital music is consumed nonstop everywhere, but a music video is a way to get noticed. Music videos have become a significant part of an artist's general creative vision and output. Most importantly, they become one of the most effective marketing tools for a musician. Not only does it showcase their brand and their music, it grows product sales and can generate streaming revenue. For filmmakers, it's an important part of a portfolio. For every minute of a song in a music video, it can take a crew anywhere from two to 10 hours of shooting, editing, and finishing. Music videos essentially are short films that take many resources, so they're a great way for a filmmaker to showcase their work. Music videos are an important jumping off point for producers and directors to hone and explore their creativity and break into the industry. Experience is the most valuable asset to an emerging filmmaker. Quality content is what's needed to build a portfolio and music videos are a great way to get there. Music videos have become a huge part of how we consume music. Essentially, YouTube is the new MTV. YouTube is the largest streaming music service worldwide and has become the second biggest search engine after Google. People watch over 1 billion hours of YouTube videos every day, and 95% of the most watched videos on YouTube are music videos, which is why we're so pleased to announce the Creative Saskatchewan Music Video Production Grants. For musicians, it's an opportunity to promote an upcoming single with the production of a music video. For a producer or a director, it's a capacity development opportunity. If you're selected, you'll gain experiencing, experiencing, experience managing production and working with clients. In the end, both the musician and the filmmaker will have a completed music video to add to their pro professional portfolio. However, just to note, the musicians will maintain ownership of the finished project. So let's talk about eligibility. For musicians, they must be Saskatchewan based. They must have a song to promote that will be commercially released within six months of the application closing date. They must have the rights to record and distribute the song that they're submitting. They must have at least one commercial release in Canada in the past 24 months. And they must have airplay on a published radio chart in the past 24 months. Musicians who achieve factor artists two or three level status or qualify for radio star maker funding will not be eligible to apply to this program. For filmmakers, they also must be Saskatchewan based. They must have a short film or demo reel of the director's work. If filmmakers have received a director or producer credit on any commercially broadcast project, they are not eligible to apply. We'll talk about what the grant does support, but first, what it doesn't. It doesn't cover the cost of previously recorded and released material. 
projects that have received funding from Creative Saskatchewan in the past can't apply to this program again. Director and producer fees in excess of 15% of the total budget are eligible. And you can't include capital expenditures, which is um, like purchasing camera equipment. So what does the grant support? It supports 100% of the approved budget to a maximum of $7,500. It covers direct expenses related to the production and post-production of the video. All phases of the production, including pre-production, production, and post-production, must take place in Saskatchewan. And video projects must be written, directed, and produced by eligible Saskatchewan residents. So how does the program work? Well, first is phase one, which is open to Saskatchewan musicians. And today we opened it. It runs until November 24th. Applications will be accepted during that time from eligible Saskatchewan musicians. Applicants must submit a recording of the song slated for commercial release. After the deadline of November 24th, all applications will be assessed by the jury and a maximum of five artists will be selected. Musicians will be able to apply on GMS, which is the Creative Saskatchewan Online Grant Management System, and they will be asked to provide a description of their musical practice, which includes a bio and information describing where you're at in your career. They'll submit a song and the creative submission, which will be the song slated for commercial release, details about the song, like title, composer, producer, engineer, studio name, recording type, method of recording, and names and bios of any hired singers and musicians who played on the recording, and background information about the song that includes the inspiration for the song and the story of how it came to be. They'll also include goals and objectives, uh, like description of your career goals and objectives and how making the video will allow you to achieve them include details on how you anticipate achieving them and why making the video is the next logical step in your career. You'll also include the song title and date of at least one commercial release in Canada in the twice past 24 months and the song title, chart name, peak position and date to demonstrate airplay on a published radio chart in the past 24 months. Next is phase two, which is open to Saskatchewan filmmakers. From December 15th to January 4th, the selected songs will be made available on a private platform for filmmaker applicants to listen to and draw inspiration from. So filmmakers will, um, that want to apply to the program will get in touch with us and then we'll give them access to the uh, private platform where they can listen to the audio tracks. From there is phase three, which is also open to Saskatchewan filmmakers that's when they'll actually submit their applications and that will happen January 5th to 18th. During that time, applications will be accepted from eligible Saskatchewan filmmakers to create a music video for one of the selected Saskatchewan musicians. Saskatchewan filmmakers can submit treatments for more than one video, but they must submit a new application for each treatment. It can be approved for, um, filmmakers can be approved for no more than one video production project. Filmmakers will apply on the Creative Saskatchewan website, um, not on GMS, and they'll be asked to provide a description of past experience. Um, it will be a description of past filmmaking experiences of yourself and anyone you wanna bring in to work on the project with you. The title and link of a short film or demo reel of the director's work, um, names and bios of the producer and the director, and a two page creative treatment for the song that you want to produce a music video for that includes storyboard shot lists and whatnot, as well as rationale for why you selected the song and what your inspiration for the video is. You'll also have to provide goals and objectives describing where you're at in your career and how making the, the video will allow you to achieve your goals. After the deadline, the applications will be assessed by the jury as well, musicians who have been selected will participate in the selection of the filmmaker that they want to work with as well. And after that is phase four, which is agreements and production. So during the month, the month of March, successful musicians and filmmakers will be paired together and matched with a mentor 
to ensure that, that the collaboration and production processes go as smoothly as possible, that both parties are able to strengthen their capacity development and gain experience collaborating with other sectors and working with clients and service providers, and they'll ensure that the best possible video is produced. The teams will work with their mentors to finalize the video treatment, the production budget, the production schedule, and the agreements. Each of the successful filmmakers will receive the grant funds to undertake the project, deliver the final product within the following six months, and submit the final reporting. The selected musicians will own the rights to distribute and monetize the final product. Um, but just note that if the video is not publicly released by the musician, the musician must allow their partnering filmmaker to use the final cut video in their private portfolio. So in a nutshell, that is the music video production grant. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the market and export development grant that we offer, you may be wondering, well, can I still apply to market and export development to make music videos? The answer is yes. Music video production will still be supported by the market and export development grants at Creative Saskatchewan. The new music video production grant has a different focus. Some videos will be eligible for both grants, so it will be up to the applicant to decide which program they want to apply to. In other cases, the eligibility requirements will, be, will determine which program an applicant can apply to. So to break it down, in the case of the music video production grant, both musicians and filmmakers apply. In the market and export development grant, it's only musicians who can apply. Um, for the eligibility, for the music video production grant, musicians must have a song to promote in the, um, within six months of the application closing date. They must have um, at least one commercial release in Canada in the past 24 months and airplay on a published radio chart in the past 24 months. And anyone who has achieved factor artist two or three level status or qualifies for Radio Star Maker, they can't apply to the music video production grant. However, for market and export development, any Saskatchewan based musician with a product can, to sell can apply to market and export development. Um, filmmakers cannot apply to market and export development to make a, a music video. However, um, they can apply to the music video production grant if they meet the qualifications. Um, in the case of the music video production grant, it's the filmmaker who receives the funding and administers the grant. For market and export development, it's the musician who applies, receives the money, and administers the grants. The funding limit for music video production is 100% of eligible expenses up to $7,500. For market and export development, it's 50% of eligible expenses up to $5,000 for the micro grant and $25,000 for the major. Um, all phases of production must take place in Saskatchewan for the music video production grant and videos must be written, directed and produced by eligible Saskatchewan residents for the music video production grant. However, for market and export development, it's encouraged that videos um, be made here in Saskatchewan by Saskatchewan individuals and companies, but it's not mandatory. For music video production, the sole purpose is for the production of a music video. For market and export development, the application can be for a host of marketing activities which also includes the production of a music video. Mentorship is a big part of the music video production grant. Uh, mentors will be matched with musician filmmaker teams to ensure the best possible video is produced. And the mentorship is at no additional charge or cost within the uh, grant program. Mentorship is not a part of the market and export development grant though. And intellectual property, well, for the music video production grant, musicians maintain ownership of the finished product, but must allow the filmmakers use of it in their private portfolio. For the market and expert development grant, typically the musician maintains ownership of the finished product, but it all depends on the agreement between them and the production company. Neither is a requirement of the program. Essentially for market and expert development, it's the mu musician that applies and receives money 
and they hire whichever videographer or production company they want to work with. In the music video production grant, both musicians and filmmakers apply. Those that are selected are then paired together with a mentor and the filmmaker receives the funding uh, and manages the product, project and administers the grant. You might be wondering, can a musician and a filmmaker team apply together to the music video production grant? Basically, no. Um, the musician and the filmmaker will each need to submit their own application. But note in their application, uh, they can make a note to say that they wanna be paired together and if they're both approved in their own assessment round. But there's no guarantee that we can match folks together. So if it's essential for the musician and the filmmaker that they work together, it's best that the musician, musician apply to the market and export development grant. And if they're approved, they can hire um, whatever filmmaker they want to work with. And if you have any questions at all, you are encouraged to talk it through with the Creative Saskatchewan program officer before applying. That's what we're here for. But if you um, do wanna go ahead and apply to the, to the music video production grant, um, well, here is what you need to consider and what steps you need to take. First, visit the website and spend some time on the music video production grant webpage. Here you'll find the program guidelines, the assessment criteria, the open and closing dates and all information you will need in order to apply. Both the general and the specific grant guidelines can be found on the website. It sounds super boring, I know, but it's really important to read. The guidelines will help you determine if you're eligible to apply, as well as if the activity you're hoping to undertake is eligible. And again, if you have any doubt at all, you can always reach out to a program officer to help you. Next, look at the assessment criteria. This is how the jury scores each application. So there's an assessment criteria for music and there's the assessment criteria for filmmakers. When the program is open, applications will be accepted on GMS, the online grant management system for musicians. If you haven't already done so, you'll need to create a profile if you visit our website um, and you click on discover, then um, you can click on log into GMS and it will take you right to the online grant management system. Filmmakers will apply on the Creative Saskatchewan website. So you can visit the music video production grant webpage and you'll be able to get to the application form from there when the program is open. It's strongly encouraged that you are familiar with the dates and you add them to your calendars. So phase one for musicians that opens today goes until November 24th. Um, the deadline will, is 4 p.m. Um, phase two is when filmmakers will be able to check out the songs and that process is, will happen December 15th to January 4th. The applications from filmmakers will be um, January 5th to 18th, that's phase three. And then phase four is for musicians and filmmakers. Um, during the month of March, the uh, musicians and filmmakers will be matched together with their mentor to finalize the video treatment, production budget, production schedule, and the agreements. And then the following six months from April to September is when the music video production will occur. It's always recommended not to wait to the last minute when you apply. Give yourself plenty of time, ensure your application is thorough and complete. Too often we have seen people wait until the last minute only to miss the deadline or have their application be deemed ineligible because it was incomplete. When the clock strikes 4 p.m., that is it. There's no way of us adjusting the online system to accept applications that are submitted even one second late. If you have any questions at all, that's what we're here for. Um, myself, Lisa Perpich, Karen Jarowitz, and Andrea Martineau are the program officers here at Creative Saskatchewan. And we're available to answer your questions and help you navigate your way through the Creative Saskatchewan grant programs. Um, there's a contact us uh, page on our website to find our information. You can also book a Zoom consultation. Um, if you just visit the website and click on the link, you can fill out the request 
Um, Creative Saskatchewan program officers make themselves available uh, for 30 minute spots throughout the week to chat with folks such as yourself about our grant programs and answer all of your questions. And it's also great to subscribe to the Spotlight, which is our bi-weekly email newsletter. It's the best way to keep up to date with funding opportunities, important deadlines, and workshop events. So just visit creativesass.ca to sign up. And now is the time for some questions. We're gonna to talk to Jeffrey Straker and um, Chris Triffo right away. But um, Karen, if folks have questions in the chat, um, you're more than welcome to share them. And hopefully we can get them answered. Question. Um... It says considered valid under the airplay requirement. Besides Billboard, would that include Indigenous Music Countdown, Earshot, and other smaller ones? Sorry, you cut out there. What was the beginning of the question? Is there a list of charts that would be considered valid under the airplay requirement? No. No, I think um, you know airplay on on any chart um, should suffice. And the second part, besides Billboard, would that include Indigenous Music Countdown, Earshot, and other smaller ones? Yeah, for sure. Any other questions, Karen? I think we're having some audio difficulty there, Karen. Hear me? Um, it's cutting in and out. Um, <laughs> it's the only one so far. Okay, okay, we're good. Okay, we're gonna have questions as well um, after we chat with Jeffrey and Chris. So why don't we do that right now? Fantastic. Um, Yes, okay. So I'm going to introduce our special guest today. Um, Singer-songwriter Jeffrey Straker grew up taking piano lessons in small town Saskatchewan and has gone on to perform over 100 shows per year, per year across Canada, Europe, and Latin America. Performances have seen him live on BBC Radio in the UK, on stage with symphony orchestras, and in people's backyards. Jeffrey's songs have been used in TV, film, and theatrical productions. He's won several awards. His latest 10 song recording just before sunrise released in May of 2021. Um, he supported it with 55 concerts in his summer long pandemic piano backyard tour. He has released several music videos over the years as part of his release and promotional strategies in working with a range of Canadian directors. He's curated a video catalog that has kept his existing fans engaged while inviting new listeners to his work. Hello, Wait a Jeffrey. minute, wait a minute. You've worked with other directors? Hold on <laughs> a second. You never <laughs> told me you've been cheating on me. What's we'll going on We'll talk about here? that offline. We'll talk about oh, <laughs> man, if I only knew how to hang up, I'd hang up right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. And, and yes, Christopher Triffo is joining us today. He's a principal partner and founding member of Wing of Blank Entertainment Group here in Regina. He's developed and produced, directed over 400 hours of programming for broadcasters like History Television, a and &E, Discovery International, Warner Brothers, Netflix, Smithsonian, HBO, Vision, CBC, IFC, City TV, and many others. Um, the award-winning program is seen in more than 150 countries and heard in over 30 languages. Chris's current projects include co-producing and co-directing the docu-series Mobile MD, Nordic Lodge, Bridging Borders, the VR 360 documentary, Bridging Borders, and he was one of the producers on I Lived with a Killer. He's received many awards, including an American Emmy Award, um, a Canadian Screen Award for Emily of the Geminis, the list is endless. So hello, Chris, hello, Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Pleasure. hello, hello. Um, um, no, go ahead, go ahead. I, I have a, 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 a slew of questions that I want to ask you, but first I, I want to talk about um, one of the videos that the two of you did together. I know you've done an, a number of them, but I want to talk a little bit about, I want to go back there, which was shot at Reindeer Lake in Northern Saskatchewan and done with support 
from the Creative Saskatchewan Market and Export Development Grant. Um, so I'm going to, if I, I know I'm not the most tech savvy person in the world, but I want to share the video, a clip of the video. Um, so I hope you can see it and here it is. I wish that we could go back there wherever it was. It's gone, it just ain't fair. And I don't want to settle for less than incredible. Ain't nothing we can't repay. Wherever it went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go back there. Such a beautiful and powerful video. Um, I have a million questions about it, um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hop to it and get started here. Um, Jeffrey, I want to start with you. So, I where did the inspiration start with for you? Like, where did that song come from? The song is, uh, I guess, in a nutshell, is um, it's a you know, breakup songs, but more importantly, uh, I, I, specifically thinking of that part of a relationship that is like the, the honey, the beautiful spot when you first get together, the, it's wonderful. It's, it's incredible. And everyone knows that. And, um, in this, in this headspace of, of where I was at, I was just wanting to have that, uh, our relationship was kind of going South and, uh, all I could think about was how amazing it once was. And so, um, that's that's what that's what that's where the song came from. The song is actually a co-write with, with with a couple other other writers as well. So you know we 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 came up with that, put it on a record, and you know and then and then the record the record was complete uh, and, and released, and and you know then I started noodling around the idea of about possibly making a video. So you were going to release it as a single, and and it's you know making a music video is is a big part of that strategy. So what led you? to work to, to working with Chris to, well, to do this video. Yes, yeah, so I had worked with Chris on one video previously, uh, you know, quite a few years before on, on a song from, I think it was a record I released in 2010. And, um, and I really enjoyed Chris's work. I knew what Chris was doing. And so I kind of thought there was something in this song, at least the way I saw it, that might be something that might fit with what how you know with 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 chris but but i wasn't sure and it's interesting the way this program is the your new video program because really the way chris and i came to do this uh and, and i'll hand it over to chris here in a second but like really is kind of the way your program is designed like i i threw the song over to chris and said hey i've got this song um you know what do you think of this song and here's what the song's about um and the reason i i i sort of do it that way is because i think I, w I would never want to make a video with someone who wasn't into the song. <laughs> you know, like I think that probably isn't a good idea. Just the, the, you know. So I, threw it, I was like, "Hey, Chris, here's a song. What do you think of this?" And and I and I think all I said was the song in in its production has a lot of space. There's a lot of space. Not not a lot of instruments playing. The lyrics are kind of sparse. Um, and I and I said, you know, sort of thematically, the song is about you know exploring exploring something new and exploring a new space and wanting to get back to something sort of familiar, but sort of taking a journey, getting there. And I left it at that and uh, sent it over to Chris. And I was, you know, ready to hear one of two things. Maybe A, this sounds like it has possibility or B, this doesn't work for me whatsoever. <laughs> but, but, you know, I threw it out there because you never know. Okay. So Chris, you get this song, you listen to it and then, and then, how did the wheels start turning in your head? Well, I think it's important to echo what what, uh, what Jeffrey said because on on the video we did before that, and then we've done a few videos after that one as well. Um, Jeffrey has always sent me two or three of his songs and said, "I'm thinking of doing a video. Which one of these is kind of jiving with you?" And and that's important because making a a music video is is really hard and passion is the thing that will see you through it so if you're just doing it just to do it 
um, it's probably not going to be very good and you're not going to really push because music videos are kind of a work of art. And so you want to have some passion behind it. So finding a song that speaks to you and catching the vision of the musician is, is critical. And uh, in that case, I, I got this one right away after, after talking with Jeffrey. And I also believe he said something about there's some loneliness in parts of this song um, in the midst of the other things he said. And uh, I just happened to be shooting a TV series up north uh, right after the forest fires. Like there literally was still parts of the forest on fire when I was up there. And I was filming in an area that was just completely desolated or destroyed from forest fires. And um, I was thinking about the music video and it really, that, that area spoke to me that sort of this vastness, this real loneliness of, of all of these trees that were now just sticks um, and the forest was gone. And, and I had spent a bunch of time way out in Reindeer, Reindeer, Reindeer Lake, which is also sort of has a lonely feel and has this open area where you can really contemplate life. And a lot of the themes Jeffrey was talking about. And so when I was up there filming, um, I put together a bit of a, a pitch to him and what I thought might work. And, and, and that's sort of also an important element to when you're working with a, a musician is, you know, once you have that general dis discussion um, and catch the, the, the vision that they have for the song, um, I like to get a copy of the lyrics. And, and so Jeffrey would send me the lyrics and then I can really, you know, break it down into where, where I think you could go with this creatively. And then of course, listen to the song a few dozen times to sort of imprint it and then came up with a bit of a creative approach. And this is the same with all the videos I've done is in then presenting that creative approach to Jeffrey and, and getting feedback and making tweaks before you, you know, uh, go to the next big step, which is the production phase. So I think that's kind of where it came from. Mm. So Jeffrey, um, Chris sends you this, this outline, this, you know, his ideas. Um, what did you think? Like, what was your initial reaction to that? Well, it, I mean, and, and I think that the, my, my, I mean, I, 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 we were, we were, we were very much on the same page from, from the get-go and I, I was quite, I was, I was excited by his location ideas and, you know, he sent the, these photos really revved me up and I was like, this, this, this could work really perfectly, you know, but, and, and, and related to that, the a way Chris and I have sort of typically worked on, on the, on all the videos we've done. And I've also done with the other directors. I've oh, worked with. <laughs> rub it that, in my face. Rub know, it music, in my face. Musicians by our nature, we're, we're creative people too. So um, I had, you know, you know, he, he shot over his idea of these spaces and then that sparked thoughts in my head. So we back and forth a lot to kind of come up with what we locked in as our, uh, we'll call them storyboards. They were kind of loose storyboards in this instance. Sometimes we've had way firmer storyboards. Um, and with every director I've ever worked with, um, that back and forth, you know, to get to what the agreed on storyboard is where we're both aligned is so important. But the back and forth thing doesn't really stop there. Like it's this constant communication, you know, but but to not put the cart before the horse, you know, we, we back and forth. So he sent me the ideas. We back and forth a little bit in order to then lock on, hey, this is what, you know, this is, this is the roadmap. Here we go. And I just happened to be up there. So I could actually send him location photos of sort of blocks of, you know, the sort of, there's sort of like four distinct blocks or locations in this video. And I was able to scout that while I was up there and I'd send them pictures. And, and, and so we were able to do that kind of work. And I think what's critical, especially for those um, on the line that haven't, uh, haven't done a video before, uh, is that the real work begins once you lock the creative approach. Um, and the more buttoned up you can be in terms of like literally everything, this video was a little bit different, but the other videos, I storyboarded literally every single shot that was going to be in the video. Now you don't have to go to that extent, but the advantage of doing storyboards, even if they're stick men, they just have to work for you, um, is you can, 
uh, have a creative idea of how you're going to do every single shot so you're not wasting time on location. Location time is, is valuable. You only have a certain amount of hours in the day. And so if you have a, a really detailed plan of every single thing you're going to do every single minute, uh, an interesting thing happens, and that's not only with this, but with any project I've done, is the more prepared you are, the more your mind is open for inspiration. And that's where the real magic can happen on set. If you're just struggling to figure out what you're gonna do because you haven't done your homework, you're literally just gonna get the basics done. But if you're all buttoned up, you know exactly what you're gonna get, then your mind is open for those creative bits of inspiration that come from the ether and allow you to take it from good to great. That won't happen if you're struggling just to figure out, you show up with your camera person and say, okay, what are we gonna do today? That, that usually doesn't work. And so the more work you can do, and the other advantage of that is it's just you. It's just you and a pad of paper at a computer noodling and figuring things out. You don't have you know 10 people following you around saying, what do you wanna do next? And you're like, oh, give me a second, I have no idea. So you really wanna be buttoned up and you really most importantly wanna be on exactly the same page with the, with the musician. And that's why that back and forth, Jeffrey and I had tons of meetings, you know, FaceTime meetings and back and forth on email. So when we show up, we both know what we're gonna do. There's gonna be no surprises. You're on the same page uh, mm -hmm. creatively when you're gonna make that, that huge step to move into production. Mm -hmm. Chris, I want to ask you about logistics and, and we can use this video as an example. So you have this idea um, buttoned up in your head, like you, you know what you want to do. Um, but now there's a lot of there's a lot of other things involved to make that happen. Right. Like there's there's people, there's logistics, like, um, how, you know, how long is it going to take? How are you going to get there? What equipment do you need? What people do you need? all of that kind of stuff. So how do you go from, um, you know, what's kind of locked into your head to arriving on set for day one and beginning? Well, the approach I take in all of my productions is I imagine the worst case scenario every single time. I imagine everything is going to go to shit at any second. And then I can prepare for those things and then generally speaking it doesn't happen because you're prepared for it and so this one was a little different i want to i want to make sure everybody understands this because uh this one we also figured out a way to wrap the music video into a tv show we were shooting and so it was extremely complex in that if i can explain this without jumping into another uh uh into into another dimension here uh, we were shooting a music video. So we're shooting a music video and then we had a separate crew filming us filming the music video um, because the music video production was part of our show Nordic Lodge. And so it had that added layer because I was directing both uh, where we had the music video being shot and a crew shooting us shooting the music video. And so there was that added layer. But generally speaking, even if you took that out, you it all starts with those kind of storyboards, even again, super rough of what you want to envision, because then you can start ans asking yourself questions. What do I need to make this happen? The most complicated one for this one, besides getting Jeffrey, you know, eight hours from Regina um, and, uh, and, and filming was, we had the insane idea of putting a piano in the middle of Reindeer, Reindeer Lake. Um, that took a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of planning, uh, getting a piano, one that we could destroy, taking all the guts out of it so it doesn't work so much. And then uh, Steve Allen, who worked with me on the video uh, along with others, found a way to make the keys so they still worked by putting elastic bands around all of the insides of the piano for the close-up so the keys would still move. Then we had to move the piano 
from base camp to an hour out into the into the place that we location scout where we wanted to film. So this complication really highlights the point I'm trying to make is even if your music video is not that complicated, there are still a hundred things that you have to plan for in terms of making that video happen. So the more you can ask yourself the questions, what do I have to do and what can go wrong? Uh, you will answer those questions and you will be ready for the day of production and it should go smoothly. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey, you, um, you're going to make this music video. Chris has this amazing idea and this, this, you know, the production schedule and everything's locked in. Um, I want to ask you about, and, and you, you received a, a grant from creative Saskatchewan to do this video. Um, how did it allow you to do what you wanted to do and what Chris had, you know, proposed as opposed to you not having that funding? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I, I couldn't have made the video. I mean, the, the, uh, like Chris, I mean, it, it, it was a, it was a, it was a tricky endeavor to, to engage, to engage a director, like, like uh, to engage a director like Chris to, to when you, when you saw sort of the, 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 the crew and the everything that was involved in doing this, I mean, it, it was actually, it was quite expensive, like for a, for an individual person to just sort of do this on their own in terms of the financial resources, it wouldn't have been possible. So the grant enabled it financially, but also, you know, I mean, really one of the ways I, I look at grants what you know we all sort of like slit our wrists as we're doing grant applications because they, you know, they 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 take so long but it puts my brain into the mode of like really actually doing the nuts and bolts planning so i kind of treat them as like you know self-inflicted torture slash planning because they force me to start planning and, and it was really during the grant application that i started to think about what this could be you know so financially for sure and then 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 you know it started getting my my wheels spinning uh in terms of like a bit on the creative process too actually mm -hmm. that's fantastic so you go up to reindeer lake um what was what was doing this video like what was shooting it like for you jeffrey it was this was an incredible experience i mean we're so working with with a with with a director like chris and then a crew that he he gathered up to do this is always it's it's a treat because like there's su there's such such pros working with pros to bring your your story to life is is incredible because songwriting is storytelling and then when you engage with someone like a, a director and a crew they're like it's like you're almost like co-writing in a sense to make to take to 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 bring the story to life in another way, you know? So there you are at this location that the director has sort of sent you photos of. Um, you get there and, and this thing's coming to life. It's quite, it's quite exhilarating. And because of all the, the planning we had done, you know, and, and Chris was so good at making sure like the details were buttoned down. We, we were able to experience some of this real spontaneous magic that we, that we captured. Like once we got the piano out into the middle of the lake, and by the way, that shot of the piano in the middle of the lake is probably my most commonly asked question at the merch table at shows. People lean in there like, how'd you get that piano to float? Like I, I get asked this question like <laughs> hundreds of times a year. It's ridiculous. But anyways, um, so Chris said this, like we had, we had it planned out, like planned. We had this sort of map, roadmap in place. It allowed for some magic. Some of the shots were just magical to capture there, and there's an interesting there's an interesting uh thing chris mentioned about you know getting me from regina to reindeer lake which is you know really far and uh, you know it's just i'll only mention this by way of of, of a, a little sharing this little tidbit with people to like not be afraid to ask for ridiculous things when making a music video because i did a uh i played this sort of gala event in regina and and i and I, we chris and i had previously thought like the, probably the best way to get me up there is to fly me somehow because it, I had something the day before and I couldn't drive for 15 hours. And I was like, well, I need a plane. 
but I don't have a plane. So I was at this gala event, and there were a lot of well-heeled people there. <laughs> so I was, when I was done playing, I walked around the room, and people were drinking their drinks and eating their cheesecakes. And, uh, you know, people were introducing themselves. And I said, oh, it's so great to meet you. Do you have an airplane? <laughs> it was like, like relentless. And believe it or not, I met a guy with an airplane who ended up flying me to Reindeer Lake. So the whole, there, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to think big and, and be creative with your approach to getting things done because, uh, you know, crazy ideas can come to fruition. So yeah, the whole thing was a, it was a great experience. And of course, as Chris said, on his end, he shot this within Nordic Lodge. So then the video creation happens now in a TV show that runs in reruns. And so whenever it reruns, people comment on my Facebook page or whatever. They're like, I'm watching you at a fly and fishing lodge floating on a piano. Like it's, it's really funny the way these, these things happen with this video. And that's one of the beautiful things about collaboration is, is, you know, those spin-offs and those benefits that other parties get from kind of pro press promoting one another. Um, Chris, I want to ask you, so you talked about, you know, your, your detailed plan and just buttoning everything up. Like, so when you get there, you're, you're good to go and you're open to these magical experiences. And it's pretty easy to see by watching this video, there's a lot of pretty magical experiences that happen. Yeah, I mean, the just to further comment on the, uh, I'm not sure if everybody can see what I can see, but the the picture of Jeffrey on the piano, mm -hmm. um, that was the most complicated shot because because we had to take, I think it ended up being six or seven boats, and they were just regular size tin fishing boats with a with a motor on the end, nothing special about them. One of the boats had the piano. Uh, which was barely balanced in there. And then we had two boats with crew and equipment filled with, you know, the red and lights and all kinds of stuff. And then we had another couple boats with, with crew members. Um, and it was about an hour, an hour and a half to get to the location. And by the time we were prepped and ready to go, uh, even with the best case scenario of problems always happening, because that's kind of the thing with any production, there's going to be compromises every day. As a director, you never get to do the exact thing you want to do. And that's across the board, whether it's a movie or a TV show or a commercial or music video, you set your bar real high and then every day beats the shit out of you. And it go, you're, you, you know, you got to compromise, you got to compromise, you got to compromise, but there's a certain point where you say, okay, I can't compromise anymore. This is, this is what we have to do. And every day is filled with those kind of things. And by the time we got to location to film, we already were starting to lose light. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, we barely got the shots off that I wanted to get. And it was right towards the end that I, I can't remember, it might've been Jeffrey that just tapped me on the shoulder and said, look behind you. And we looked behind us and there was the harvest moon. We weren't even shooting in that direction um, because we needed the light uh, that was that was coming. And, uh, and so we quickly turned everything around to get that shot. And uh, and that was one of those serendipitous moments uh, where we got something absolutely amazing that that quite frankly wouldn't have happened if if I if everybody wasn't really prepared, and and that's any video. Uh, I mean, any video that you do where you're going to engage a crew uh, of any size, even a crew of three or four for a small video, um, and the, the musician and yourself. Uh, and in a lighting package, even if it's one location, you still need to plan every second of that day in your mind because things 100% are going to go wrong. Things are going to change. And so you need a plan so you can adapt and that you're, you're, the thing that you do adapt is you're adapting in the right direction of what the music video needs to be. Because there is always changes, uh, 100%. And I've never had a production of the hundreds of productions I've done that has gone exactly how I planned it from beginning to end. And so the more prepared you are, the more, more you can roll with the punches and hopefully end up with something that everybody's happy with. Mm -hmm. um, just real quick, um, because we are don't have a whole lot of time left, I want to ask each of you a question before we um, go to any other questions that folks may have. Um, Chris, in a nutshell, what advice would you give 
filmmakers producing videos? Well, I think I think I've kind of um, had a theme. A lot already, but <laughs> I've had a bit of a theme going, so I'll I'll hunker down on that theme. Uh, I would say most critically, make sure you're on the same page uh, with the musician. This is this is his. Ultimately, he's the one that is going to take this forward. After you're done, he's the one that's going to use this to promote himself. I mean, obviously you can use this to promote yourself as a director, but this really is his video. Um, and you want to make sure you're on the same page because if you're not on the same page, you know, there's going to be friction. Um, it's not going to be a fun experience. So you can do all kinds of homework. Just you and the musician can spend as much time as you want together. You don't have a crew staring at you wondering what you're going to do next. So get on the same page creatively make sure you have passion for where you're going to go because passion you know you can overcome almost anything if you have that passion and then lastly be as prepared as you can prepare every element uh, of the video prepare exactly what you want to accomplish storyboard everything meet with your director of photography well in advance so you can plan out the shots and you just have this really plan in front of you that's like a roadmap and if you have a roadmap uh, even if you deviate a little bit on that roadmap you still know where you want to go and you will get there at the end excellent thank you so much chris and jeffrey one last question for you um what advice would you have for musicians that are marketing their music with videos and how important is it like okay you make the video but then what? What do you do with the video once you release it? So that's a two part question. So then, so I think yeah. for the for, for, for the first one, I'd say um, when you're partnered up with a director, when I've been partnered up with the director, even though like Chris pointed out, Chris mentioned and he pointed out to me that like, in a way he's working for me to make this video of mine. Um, you, you align on this sort of vision. Like there's a point when I really have to I don't want to put too many reins on Chris's creativity because I, though he's working for me, I want him to be able to do the best at what he does. So it's a fine line, you know, to like you're kind of giving up your baby a little bit, but do that. Like you, you got to be willing to, you know, give it over to this other creator to help tell your story. So be just be cognizant of that. That's it's something I, I'm always sort of thinking about when I do this um, in terms of the process. Then once the video's done. I mean, that's that's the that that's that's a big question because making it is one thing, having people see it is another. Everybody mm -hmm. has a number in the phone book. How many people phone it? Um, I've I've done I've sort of graduated that over time. I, I certainly use all my social media platforms to share it. I have a pretty robust newsletter database of you know people that I've collected over 15 years that I send it out to. But I've also um, started engaging and using a digital marketer to get to do use do some creative digital promotions and through you know that's through using Google and Facebook targeting targeting and all sorts of things and I've been really impressed at some of those results and and if anybody wants to know you know the person I'm who I've used recently I'm I'm happy to tell them if they want to message me or something but um I do all the things I can but recently I've been engaging outside help and it's really really been had some amazing results good I'm glad to well, hear that I'm actually um, glad. I thought you were going to ask him who's his favorite director. And I'm glad <laughs> him, dodge that one. <laughs> Thank you both so, so, so much for joining us. Um, Andrea, do we have any questions that we can quickly get to before we have to say goodbye? Bet. Um, we've got one quick question here in the Q&A. Um, how does additional funding outside this grant play into a production eligibility? Um, really, this um, this program is for um, the, the entire amount typically should be funded by Creative Saskatchewan. Um, you know, we're not really looking at budgets in excess of seventy five hundred dollars. Um, our other grants like market and export development, of course, you know, the other 50 percent or even more if there's a cap, you know, other funders can be part of that personal investment, that kind of thing. Um, but the music video production grant, this, this really is 100% of eligible expenses up to $7,500 from Creative Saskatchewan. 
Perfect. Um, we've got one more from the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible to work with more than one artist on more than one video or is there a limit within a calendar year, et cetera? Um, for this grant, it would be like one filmmaker can do one video. That would be the maximum. I mean, you can do others outside of the grant, but you can only get funding to do one through this program. Um, let's see here. Oh, there is a question here. Um, as a Sask Music member, do I need to have a membership to Creative Saskatchewan? No, Creative Saskatchewan is not, we do not have members. Um, it, we're, it's completely open as long as you meet the eligibility of being a Saskatchewan resident, you can absolutely apply. Um, and then this one is for Jeffrey. Um, hi, Jeffrey, what tips do you have for applying for the market and export grant? Whew, um, <laughs> I have I have worked I have worked at honing my applications like really hard over time. Um, and and I think it's this funny balance that everyone knows between not providing too much but providing enough info and really like focusing on selling your idea with the important parts and kind of trimming out the fat. And I actually had a, a really couple great exercises in trimming out the fat, um, which is really uh, like the excess of your application, because even though there's some stuff that is like peripherally important, I think what I've learned over time is it can distract from the meat and potatoes or it can complicate it more than, than letting the jury see the important meat and potatoes. And I had a really great meeting. Um, well, I mean, I, I worked with, had a couple chats with creative SaaS people. But Lorena at SAS Music also was a great set of outside eyes who was really willing to read my one of my applications. And man, she like, she trimmed the fat. And once she was done, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, it made a huge difference. And and honestly, it's it's stuff that Lisa had probably told me a hundred times, you know, trim the fat, trim the fat, trim the fat. And, you know, and, and I did. But that, that working with the outside eyes, like wh whether it was Lorena or, or somebody else, that was a really great exercise, like to someone who can be third party, just see what they see. It really helped. Excellent. Well, I think that is all the time that we have. Um, anyone that wants to chat further, you can certainly um, get in touch with myself or any of the other program officers at Creative Saskatchewan. And we're always happy to help you navigate our grant programs and answer your questions. Jeffrey and Chris, I can't thank you enough for taking time to join us today. It was great. And thank you for every, everyone for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.